Hey there, everyone. How's it going? Thanks a lot for coming along to this presentation. It's entitled Getting the Most from the GovCMS8 UI Starter Kit Theme. Uh, for this presentation today, it will be um, provided by two people. Toby Bellwood uh, from GovCMS will be book bookending the, uh, the presentation, doing an intro and uh, the conclusion. And I'll be talking about, um, you know, basically sort of showing you the theme and how you can get the most from it. Um, for the presentation, this is roughly what we're going to be covering. Uh, we're going to sort of be covering some conceptual issues around the requirements and the approach and how we uh, approached implementing the theme. And we'll also have a couple of demos in there as well, showing you quickly what the theme looks like out of the box and a very quick uh, demonstration of uh, how you can build uh, a page. Um, we'll also then sort of have a look at how uh, you guys as themers will be able to use that, either forking the theme or extending it. So I'll now hand over to Toby to, uh, to kick off. Thank you. I've got a great gig in that I can bookend other people's presentations and share half the credit. Um, uh, uh, this is quite important for us um, as GovCMS, um, not doing all the work ourselves, hence the earlier theme of my first presentation. But what we really wanted um, from a GovCMS-based theme is the, well, co the core underpinnings of this presentation. Um, I can, yes, I'll move away again. Oh. That's what you get for not obeying my riders. <laughs> um, from our point of view, what we wanted from um, Drupal 8 and from GovCMS 8 was a much easier experience for novice or first time site builders. Um, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, they're not as big and scary um, as they seem but they're still pretty big and scary if all you're used to doing is creating fields and changing content types. So in order to massively reduce this time to an MVP, um, something that we see in government quite a bit is how do I get started? Where do I, what do I build? What do I do? We'll go through workshops. It'll be a long time before your executive see your day one site. What we think we can do is do better. And certainly looking at the Umami demo theme in Drupal 8, being able to provide someone with something that looks like their website on day one, they can feel like they've achieved. You, as a site builder, can put something together that's got your photos, your logo, your name, and bears some semblance of a government website was massively important. And to be able to do that without having to worry about gulping or yarning or any of that stuff, being able to do that from a site is something that we saw as being critical. Um, the other thing, not for everyone. Not everybody we're expecting to use the base theme. If you look carefully at GovCMS 7, you'll see that the amount of sites that use the default GovCMS theme is about zero. Um, no judgment on the current GovCMS theme. Um, but your first step towards building a GovCMS site is either to build your own theme or to use someone else's. And we support that. Um, it's also, we looked at having this as a place to get started. We'll always talk about iterative website development. You shouldn't build a site, drop it, and then walk away for four years, do exactly the same process. What we love is seeing agencies that go for beta, they release a website, they release new functionality constantly and consistently and keep iterating and growing that website. So that's what this is. We went to market with what I thought were really simple requirements. Um, and looking through the very different results that came back, um, the one from Morphed really stood apart in that they understood what we were looking for and weren't afraid to tell me that we should have looked for something slightly different. Oh, probably shouldn't point it to the microphone. Um, but look for something slightly different. And they really helped channel us towards a clarity of thinking that I think has produced something pretty impressive. So. I'm going to hand back to Murray. He's going to show you everything that they've done, all the good stuff, give you all the demos, and then I'll waltz in at the end and take some of the credit. So. Nice one. Thanks a lot, Toby. Okay, so when we uh, sort of uh, won this job back in, in June of this year, 
we were naturally excited, but there was also a degree of trepidation. Um, you know, we really wanted to do a, a great job uh, on this project. Uh, we knew we had to have a rock solid theme that was following best practices, but we also, you know, wanted to sort of give editors a, a set of tools that would allow them to, uh, you know, build out sort of sites from the get-go. Um, I suppose most of you would be familiar with the, the design system, but for those of you who aren't, uh, the design system is a set of components that have been worked on uh, by the Digital Transformation Agency. And these components are, uh, you know, recommended ways of uh, building and, and constructing sites for, for government agencies. So it was a given that we had to implement uh, the design system. But the design system only went so far. Um, and, you know, there's sort of several sort of blanks and, and gaps that needed to be filled in. And so we would refer to other sort of government sites that were out there that were considered um, best practice. And so in the building of this theme, we've, we've looked at uh, sort of UIKit, but we've also looked at what other sort of cool government sites uh, are doing out there. So this is the design system. It's not all of the components. If you want to check it out, and I thoroughly recommend that you do, you should go to the designsystem.gov.au. Um, but basically, these components range from very simple things, such as basic HTML elements and, and things such as that, all the way through to more complex things, such as menus and uh, you know, accordions. Um, one of the really sort of strong features of UIKit, or the design system, is the color palette that it uses. It has this concept of an alt color, which is sort of gray, uh, and then dark colors and dark alt colors which is basically the primary color that you're going to use for the theme. So this is, uh, you know, the use of color is a really sort of strong component in how uh, the design system works. Um, so that was the design system, but we also looked at a number of other sites and the Department of Health had released this sort of campaigns website. Uh, and I think Danny will be talking about this tomorrow, so I recommend you, you check out his um, talk uh, about it. Um, but with the campaign's website, there was uh, a number of sort of subsites or microsites that were really kind of more graphical uh, in nature. And if you have a look at the elements that are on these sites, you can see they have like these full width designs, uh, colors, you know, for, for branding, uh, sort of background images, parallax images, uh, uses of cards and teasers and grids and, and these things. So these are sort of like site building tools that you would want editors to be able to use to, to build these sites out. So this, these set of campaign sites were sort of very uh, influential upon us. The other important thing to note with these sites is that they do use UIKit underneath as well. So it was a great way to see how you can have the style guide underneath and then the branding over the top. And uh, the great thing is that they're using content to tell the story here. And, and this is sort of like a, a pattern that we wanted to, to capture with the starter theme. Um, that said, you know, there's also a number of structural elements that we had to think about. Things such as, you know, the headers, the footers, the search and logos and menus. How, how did all those things uh, kind of work? And, you know, uh, at the start of this project, those things weren't really defined either. So we looked at some of the other sites that were out there, such as the DTA site, uh, the Beta Health website is, is another great example, and also there's the Immunization Handbook. So all of these sites were using like an up-to-date sort of, well, the DTA site's using an up-to-date version of UIKit, and these were kind of educational for us in how we to approach it. So that's the background, and, uh, you know, we've kind of surveyed, uh, you know, the, the field, and we sort of know what we're targeting for. But then we had to work out how are we going to implement it. And, uh, you know, one of the concepts we were thinking about is that the theme really should be supporting site builders and editors. It shouldn't necessarily be, you know, defining very strict things. So we did not want to sort of straitjacket uh, sort of future sites. We really wanted them to be free to build what they wanted to build, but for us to provide a set of components that were underneath that. Also, this is not just a minimal sort of implementation of UIKit. Um, you know, we could have done that. And indeed, if you go into the theme and have a look in the templates, there's a UIKit folder there with lots of Twig templates implementing UIKit and the design system in a very pure way. We have that covered. But there are also, you know, a number of other components to, to try to bring that stuff up to the, the world of the editor. Um, as you probably know, you know, Drupal is composed of many things. You have content uh, and configuration 
and uh, you know the theme. And what we are doing here is basically combining the theme with the config. So in order to have a successful project, we came up with this concept of foundations. So if you have a look in GovCMSH, you'll see there's a foundations module there. And that has things such as layouts, um, modifiers, and uh, sort of field definitions as well as the content types. So you can think of GovCMS as like the code underneath, this sort of set of configuration called the foundations, and then you have the theme that's actually going down and implementing um, many aspects in, in those foundations. And finally, we have one size does not fit all. Um, we're really trying to take a component-driven world here, uh, view of the world. We're, we're not trying to sort of style up individual pages. And indeed, we're actually recoiling from any uh, desire to actually put in sort of very specific selectors, um, you know, which would not be appropriate and limit the use of the site in the future. So quickly having a look at this in a sort of more conceptual way, basically the starter theme is concerned with all the things down the left. These are the horizontal things that, that I like to talk about, uh, things such as the layouts, the view modes, um, a small set of paragraphs for the components, modifiers, a certain number of fields there which are standard across content types, and of course the design system and, and Drupal-y things as well. We, we will be implementing those. But the things we were steering clear of were things such as the content types, they're in there in GovCMS um, from the get-go, but they have a very sort of simple uh, theming. We really want to leave that up to you, the, the, uh, the implementers, to work out firstly what content types you want and what they're going to look like. So we were sort of steering clear of, of getting too detailed in that. As well as things such as views and specific pages, we really um, did not want to implement uh, any of those as well. So we're really kind of taking a pure, you know, configuration plus theme approach there. So that's enough talking. You guys have got a background. I'll quickly flick over and we'll have a look at a, a short video of um, what, the, uh, what the theme looks like when we start up. So this is like GovCMS out of the box when you install it. And you can see that we're, we're having this sort of layered layer cake design. You can see parallax images there. Um, sort of different sections which are implemented as paragraphs. Um, you can see for here, example, a, a node list um, sort of rendered out in, you know, sort of equal uh, columns. So there's a lot of sort of site building or editor tools here from the, the get-go. Um, we've also used KSS node to build out a style guide. Uh, so KSS node can go in and sort of render out HTML and apply the, the theme to it. So you can see here in this style guide, you can see we're, we're giving the accordion a bit of a run for its money. You can see these different colors that are coming through, the old, the, da the dark, and the dark alt. And uh, you know, basically we're just showcasing here the various twig templates underneath and how they work. Um, the most important thing here really is that we're showing that this works across all color combinations. So uh, this is a really strong foundation where uh, editors can sort of mix and match the colors they want to use and they know that the components are going to work uh, reliably. So this style guide, yeah, ships with uh, the theme itself. One of the other things we did was we had a test uh, web page as well. And this is sort of some default content that's uh, created when the site spins up. Um, which we're just taking through the various components to run through the money for their money here, showing off, in this case, uh, different view modes, uh, teasers and teaser smalls, um, what we call stacks, these are these ones, and stack detail. So all of these components is what we were seeing on the campaign's website and sort of the DTA website and things like that. We also have the calendar items for events, which is one that Toby wanted to, uh, to put in there. We got that one in. Um, yeah, and basically, we, we're just running through um, different components here. You can see we have background colors here that can be selected by the editors, and that's drilling straight into the design system's uh, colors. And here we have some paragraphs, um, some simple paragraphs showing off the colors, and then we're going to move into uh, other sort of modifiers and things like that, where we're sort of putting background images in and, and uh, doing other effects, such as adding colors and, and things like that. And finally, we're finishing off with some typography, some simple stuff, and then the accordion. So that's, 
that's a test page. And we really built this out because we wanted to demonstrate that we have consistent view modes, uh, we have consistent sort of grids and colors, and all of that stuff is working. Quickly flicking through the content types, these are all there. These are, have not changed since sort of earlier versions of GovCMS. We've really taken a, a minimal um, sort of version, a minimal approach with these guys, um, and uh, leaving that up to, to you to implement. So that's a, a very, very quick three minute run through there um, of what the, uh, the theme looks like. Okay. So the next thing, and here we're going to move on to how uh, you as sort of site builders, developers, uh, and themers are able to provide some of these tools uh, to in the sites that you're going to be building out. Um, we've really taken the approach, and it's my sort of firm belief, that um, you know, the role of the site builder really should be to prov be providing tools to the editors, um, rather than crystallizing little sort of snowflake designs sort of down in the theme, you know, we're always looking to how can we abstract that so that uh, the editors can sort of control some of these things. So I'm just going to run through a few modules that are in the distro so you can see uh, how they're actually working. So the first one here is Envy Reference Display. Just have a quick drink. This is a, a module which allows editors to select a view mode and sort of display a list of items with that view mode. So for example, um, I could be an editor in a node list a paragraph and say, hey, I want these three nodes and I want them all to be displayed as stacks. So this is just a, a simple way to you know, kind of get those sort of nice uh, landing page things working. If you guys want to implement your own view modes, they can easily just plug into this system and you're bring, bubbling those view modes up so that the editors can select them. Um, obviously the view modes are important it's important to implement them consistently across all content types. Once you've done that, you know that you can create lists of things and they're going to render out nicely. So if you look at the configuration in the theme, quite a lot of work has gone into actually implementing those view modes across each content type. There's another module called the Envy Class Formatter, um, and this allows editors to sort of select a style, a class, and drop that onto an entity. So for example, here with the color palette, that's picking up on stuff straight out of um, the design system. This, these are the colors that have been defined in the design system. And this is allowing editors to basically drop that on as a background or a color system on a, on a paragraph. Um, paragraphs, really sort of core to this um, sort of paradigm that we're working with here. Um, it's great to sort of be able to, for editors to mix and match the components and, and put them on the page as they wish. We held ourselves back and implemented a minimal set of paragraphs. We didn't want to go too crazy. You can see we've got the accordions, which are shipped with the design system. We have a content paragraph that's very simple. And the item and node list, they're really sort of, you know, very good for, you know, building out these lists of items that you'll be um, putting on uh, landing pages and whatnot. There is another module in the system called modifiers. Um, the modifiers module is a plug-in system. And the great thing about modifiers is that these plugins can be um, discovered in the theme layer. So if you have uh, the desire to implement your own, you can do that in SAS. You can implement your modifier, drop it into your theme, and that will be just bu bubbled up to uh, the editors. So this is a great way for you to be able to extend uh, the functionality. We've put in uh, a few modifiers here for relatively simple things like, you know, handling different backgrounds and, and things like that. So this is kind of bringing the eye candy to the site and allowing the editors to tell the story that they want. Uh, layouts, obviously super important uh, in Drupal 8. Um, we made the decision to use Panelizer uh, with this build and that was for one prime reason and that was it allowed editors to select which layout they wanted on a per node basis. So for example here, you can see the editor has picked an edge-to-edge -edge layout where there's no container and basically the content can go edge-to-edge, -edge, um, but you could also pick some other common, um, common approaches here. So yeah, these layouts are available. Um, you don't have to use Panelizer, you can back Panelizer out and, and use other methods, but these layouts are going to be uh, available. Of course, layouts are discoverable in the theme layer as well. 
So if you want to implement your own layouts, you guys can do that in the SAS environment. <coughs> Mate, my voice is just terrible. Um, we're going to go into a, a page building demo now. Where we'll see it all in action. A uh, quick three minute demo. So just going to come over here. Okay. So here I am. So logged in as an editor that can create nodes. I'm going to create a standard page. And I'm going to call this page demo and give it a little bit of metadata. <laughs> Always got to do that. Um, we're going to actually say, hey, this is going to be a landing page, so let's make it edgy. So we're going to select the edge to edge layout here. Uh, and then we're going to start adding paragraphs. So the first um, paragraph here is a very simple content paragraph. Uh, we give it a welcome. So that title is just like an administrative title. And this heading here will be a, an H2 on the page. Um, we then have a little bit of content. It's very, very simple. So this is content, pure content. But what we're going to do now is we're going to, uh, you know, start fleshing this out a little bit more. This read more sort of component was very common on a lot of the, the sites we've been seeing. And here we can see we're picking out uh, a class, that's Entity Class Formatter, and the style, that's Entity Class Formatter behind that as well. So now we're going to pick a node list out. This is another paragraph type that we have. And we're just going to pick out a few key uh, nodes that we want people to link through to. So we can put a little sort of intro there. Let's pick out the three nodes and we're going to pick out an article, a news and a blog post. So yeah, we're just going through and adding those in. So the idea here is that you know, we're really trying to make it super easy for the editors so that they you know, really have to do the least amount of thinking possible. Um, we've also put in uh, a read more as well, just to sort of show that operating. Okay. I really wish I'd learnt to type at the age of 12 when I got a VIC-20. If only I'd learned to touch type back then, these demos would go a lot quicker these days. Most people speed this part of the demo <laughs> up to make it look like they can type that. <laughs> I'm not that sophisticated. So we're, we're picking out a colour palette here and we're, we're picking out a layout. That's an entity class formatter, so we have three items going across. Um, and now we're just going to put a, a final little bit of content in um, and we'll actually be using a modifier on this one. So just chucking a little conclusion in here. And so, you know, generally with the drop downs that have been implemented with Entity Class Formatter, it's, it's quite quick uh, to do. The modifiers require a little bit of work. You actually have to click a, a button here and we can add an image in. So for this one, we're going to add a, like a dark background in. And you can see that we actually picked the dark uh, color palette there and that would just make sure that the, all the colors are accessible. So yeah, we'll chuck that uh, background in. And then we're gonna put in one more uh, modifier here. And this is a relative height modifier. This kind of is pure presentation really, but this is where we just wanna say, hey, we want this div to be a certain ratio. So we're gonna chuck it in sort of three one-on-one -on -one ratio, align it vertically. And that's it, we can click save, and then we're gonna come back and uh, yeah, see all of our handiwork. So there we have the, the welcome, you can see the call to action there, you can see the three boxes, you can see the alt background, you can see the, uh, the image uh, background, and then you can kind of see it's got the ratio. And that's basically it for that demo. So that was all done in uh, three minutes, and you know, hopefully you'll see the power that you've got there. I think the secret is, is that you have editors and designers that are able to understand these tools and to actually use the components uh, to the best way. And if they do, you can have like super rapid sort of, uh, sort of site building with, the, with this approach. Okay, moving right along. Um, so yes, we have a theme, what do we do with it? You know, do we extend it or do we fork it? And there's many, many, many ways where you can extend this theme without sort of doing a single line of CSS. You can implement your own layouts, you can implement your own modifiers. Um, you know, these are just plugins. Um, you can also, you know, just have, uh, you know, implement your own paragraphs, and that's great. Um, so you can just extend this base theme, and it will sort of operate in a really nice way. Um, and uh, as you can see, there's many systems here which will allow you to do that. 
But I think in reality, people probably are going to want to fork this theme uh, a lot of the time. And the main reason for that is that the theme is based on SAS variables. Um, and if you go to the design system and have a look at the getting started section, they will show you how to edit some of these variables for things such as color and typography and spacing. Now, of course, once you've done that, you have to rebuild your whole theme and those colors are sort of like deeply ingrained in the CSS. So I think the reality is that people will be uh, sort of forking these themes. It is designed to be a, a starter theme after all. Okay, for the future, uh, the UI kit is always progressing, okay? It's uh, always moving forward. New components are being added. So you can see here we have cards and table components that are currently being developed. Um, but not only that, components do change, and there's also some missing gaps. So I can see you know, that the starter theme over time will be developing and incorporating all of these uh, sort of new and shiny features that get included into the design system. The theme still is relatively young, and there has been some additional testing that's uh, gone on with that, and that there will be some sort of minor changes being made in the near future to improve certain uh, aspects um, of it. So it is a work in progress. And finally, I really must uh, make a note about uh, the layout builder. Um, you know, when we started this project, uh, it was back in June 2018, and at that point, uh, layout builder was not really ready for prime time use. We made the decision after a, a lot of consideration to use, um, you know, paragraphs as uh, the paradigm. You know, paragraphs is is very sort of popular and well known. So we have used uh, sort of paragraphs and panelizer um, in this particular build. However, I can see in the future that Layout Builder will become more mature, will gain traction, and maybe even today you could start building sites with it. But that's probably something that will be looked at uh, in the future. If that happens, some of those paragraphs we've made, maybe they would need to be implemented as custom blocks. So there's a small change there, but really, in the larger picture of you know what the theme is, um, it's only one sort of small little component that would be changed. So that concludes my part of the presentation. I'll now like to hand over to Toby. <laughs> so for, from my point of view, um, what Murray and the team came up with met all of our goals. The idea that someone like me could build a site out of a box relatively simply, could make those changes, could change blues to greens and greens to reds and change the image and make this bigger and that smaller without having to go into the, the CSS and the JavaScript is really important. Um, the implementation of the design system, um, it's important from our agency's point of view. Obviously, people are looking to GovCMS to get as much um, adherence to digital and the design standard as possible, um, the digital standard as possible. So design system's a bit of a no-brainer. Um, obviously, some agencies will want to do things differently, but for us, design system was a, a sensible choice. Um, I think the, the couple of brief demonstrations Murray's given, uh, it shows how modular and flexible it is, um, being able to make a lot of those changes. As a site builder, you don't need GitHub access, you don't need to fork or clone the theme. You can go in and you can make a page in three minutes that looks acceptable, looks good. Um, it's designed to be useful. This is a, the, the big change over GovCMS 7 in that we actually want some people to build sites using the base theme. Um, but it is, it's just that starting point. So it, it's a point from which you can kick off and you can really grow from there. So um, we've already got some sites starting to being built using this base theme. Um, one of them is our site. I think it would be a um, fairly bad move to stand up here and talk about how great this base theme is and then not use it ourselves. So we've built the, um, the beta.govcms.gov.au site, which coincidentally is the first Drupal 8 site on GovCMS SAS. Um, it was built in-house by someone who is essentially a first-time site builder. And I'm not gonna embarrass you, Dean, but you've done. <laughs> You've done a great job, a really great job. And a lot of the feedback from that has come in to, we'll put that back and we'll sit down with, with Murray and the team and work out, did we miss something in the base theme or is this just typical extend fork workflows? Um, 
We've also sat down with the, the team from Salsa and they've done some initial work looking at implementing that theme and using it. So we'll start to gather a lot of this feedback um, as we bring this forwards. But we're really impressed with it. It meets our goals. Um, that out of the box experience I think is crucial. Um, I think it's crucial in bringing the next generation of GovCMS developers to Drupal, bringing Drupal developers to GovCMS and really making one of the pain points that we see is the amount of work and effort that goes into building and rebuilding sites and themes. If we can take some of that away from agencies that need it, then this is a win for us and it's a really sensible investment. Um, I reckon we're a couple of minutes ahead, so we've got time for some questions. Um, do you want Murray to do another live page building demonstration? <laughs> um, Toby. Was the 11 and a half grid ones a real, exp a real <laughs> example? Because it wouldn't surprise me. Um, look, and this is on us. Um, we know that GovCMS and Drupal 8 has been a long time coming. Um, we, it's now available. Um, we are starting to build sites on GovCMS that are Drupal 8 and SAS. Um, being able to uh, market this better is something that we will certainly get to when we're done migrating hundreds of sites. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of these sort of softly, softly, slowly, gently. Um, if you're working for a Drupal shop and you're interested, if you're in an agency and you're interested, reach out and we'll tell you how to get started and, and what you need to do. Um, bear with us, there may be a couple of initial, um, uh, as we make some of these changes, there may be a couple of things that sort of modify slightly. Um, even our, on our own site, we um, had to go through one fairly comprehensive um, meld process to try and merge our forked version of the theme in with a the base version, but it didn't take us more than half an hour to work out, so um, it, it wasn't, wasn't the end of the world. So yeah, expect more from us in the coming weeks, but if you've got something on the ball now or you're interested now, reach out and we'll let you know how you can get um, up and running. I just say a few words there. It, uh, it's also important to note that you know what you saw there is not meant to be prescriptive, right? It is just a starter theme, and of course, different sites are going to have different looks and different designs. So, I don't want you to think that that's set in stone. You know, the idea is that you can take it and run with it, and you know, implement your own view modes and whatever, and, and do what you want. So, uh, you know, we've tried to fill in the gaps where we can, but of course, different projects will have you know different different aims, so yeah, it is meant to be a starting point. So you can pick up some of that variability and you know, should be able to handle it on, on your own. So, yeah, so, I mean, you can take that starter theme and just, you know, go crazy with the content types that you want, so you've you still got that flexibility there. So, that's why I said you can go a long way with it, but uh, you know, I think once it comes down to the colours and the typography and other things like that, you know, that's when you'll, you'll probably need to, to, uh, to break down into a custom theme. But oftentimes what we're doing now is using that starter theme and just build, 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 and then when we kind of get three quarters of the way through and we want to start putting the finishing touches on, then we can just, you, you know, flip over to a, a, a custom version and, and then do it. So it does give you that ability to, to build quite quickly at the start. Cool. One, one of the things that we've also observed is that the theme fulfills two, two sort of purposes. One is constraints and one is freedom. If you can do it inside the theme without having to go outside the theme, that gives sometimes um, developers more, it can close the scope a little bit. It's like, well, we can do it this way with the tools that we're given today, 
or I can go away and I can prepare you a quote and we can do X hours work to get your exact implementation, which do you want? And that's gonna be a lot more, that's gonna help people be able to box their engagements a lot better, I think. Um, but same point, if you take it from day one and intend to extend it, you can do that. Danny. I'll, I'll let Toby answer that, but I'll be quick. But I'll just say, yeah, they've just changed the colours in the design system, right? And <laughs> I'm just going, what? You know, so they've, yeah, you know, that's new classes and, yeah, all that. That's a really fundamental thing. And that's a little bit of a pain, right? Because that's going to flow back into, you know, some of the, the structure that we've built as well. So I, I think there is a bit of a challenge there in trying to keep up to, to speed with it, but also knowing what's coming along. But at the end of the day, uh, that's a GovCMS um, thing. Look, we're never going to say to the design system, you've got to stop and slow down because we've got all these people building on this and it's really important, but we at least need to try and keep pace with that. We're obviously a very good implementation. We're a very good way of the design system reaching a lot wider audience than it can in its React and native forms. Um, so yeah, it's something that we've got to work closely with. Um, Murray and his team are certainly keeping a very close eye on it and they're... Um, giving back an awful lot of their time and effort in pull requests, particularly um, the work done around listening to what the community said about Panelizer. Um, apparently it was really hard to remove Panelizer from the theme and the distribution. So there's a couple of PRs in there that make it easier to remove Panelizer. So you can then use the theme with Display Suite or um, basically anything else. That's a real win for, for more people. The same on the design system. As new items hit the design system, I know that main nav and side nav have recently um, graduated. We've got to look at how we can incorporate those. Um, there's always going to be some jiggery pokery, and there's always going to be some work that needs to be done behind the scenes in trying to get classes to match up. But if we can produce produce that foundation that looks and stays the same but grows and evolves with the design system, it's going to make your lives a bit easier to pull the two across. So, thanks. Um, we're trying to do as much of it externally as we can. Um, the work that we did with Morphed on the initial theme was all public. The work we're doing with Salsa on some of the tweaks and tidy ups is all public now. Um, I know that certainly um, the team from OPC has done a lot of work um, publicly, sort of contributing suggestions and comments and things. We'd welcome anybody putting their ideas forward. Um, we want to be far more receptive to that um, because, yeah, you are the guys that are actually building and implementing. If you've got something that will save us, yourselves, and other people time, then we want to know about it and we want to provide a better way of getting that in. Um, I know that in Drupal 7, the, the SAS was a bit of a closed shop. Um, there's all sorts of reasons behind that, but I think with Drupal 8, we can be a lot more receptive and a lot more agile in this and look at ways of incorporating feedback, suggestions, and yes, certainly, if you've got a PR that fixes your issue, throw it to us because we'll have a look at it and we will, um, chances are, we'll, if we don't adopt it, we'll cherry pick parts out of it because um, that's, we can't do it all ourselves.
I mean, certainly Murray and I were both at the last design system meetup um, in Canberra a few months ago, a while ago. This is a long time ago. Um, but yeah, certainly we're, we want to be active participants in the design system community. We want to be able to help and grow that and build the conversations out further than because we, we know that the design system is a fantastic tool and if you're writing a React app, you've got everything provided there for you and you can drag and drop components. If you're building a Drupal site, you need something in between. We're that something in between, but we're also the something in between the core design system community and the actual end user implementers who are being told we should be using design system, how do we do that? So yeah, we've got more of a role in that sort of facilitator, coordinator, gatherer type thing and certainly encouraging participation and engagement more broadly. So expect to hear more from us in that. So the theme lives on Drupal.org. I think it's called GovCMS 8 UI Kit Starter. Um, the Drupal distribution lives on Drupal.org as well. Um, they're both mirrored back to, GitLab, to GitHub, and we do most of the issue pull request work in GitHub, just because it's easier. Um, the default install of GovCMS 8 includes the GovCMS 8 theme, and that's all being part of the security accreditation package undertaken as part of the new GovCMS platform. So the accreditation was undertaken on a basic install of GovCMS 8 with the theme up and running. So it's been through um, the necessary testing from that point of view. If agencies want to push it further, push it a little bit harder, more than happy to, more than happy to help out and see what we can do to really make, um, to really answer those kind of questions going forwards. But yeah, we're, it, it's part of the core GovCMS offering, so it's included into our current um, security accreditation. I don't think the projects, the projects aren't at a full release yet, because we've still got some minor tidy up to do, but they will be in the next few weeks. Any more? Or am I standing in between you and lunch? Scared. Um, as a prolific user of government services, I don't think that's a bad thing. If they've all got the ability to add their own flavor and, and style and look and feel. Um, I don't particularly want a clone army of websites that all have exactly the same colors, exactly the same layout, but I'd like the functionality and the features and the basic operation to be similar between them. Um, as someone who hates spending taxpayer money, I think the amount of money we spend on making websites look flashy versus functional is absolutely terrifying. And we've only got a couple of minutes, so I won't get too soapboxy. Um, but it, it's a real risk that we go for form over, for start to look at form over function. Um, I don't think we'll get a whole army of exactly the same looking websites. I think they will have some underlying similarities. but. I'd rather re-implement someone else's work than rebuild someone else's work. So that, that's kind of where we're coming from. It's obviously, people can abandon this and they can go for bespoke artisanal websites if they want to, and that's that's the agency's choice. And that does fit for some in some cases. In some cases, it's not necessary. Sorry, I'll just say quick word there. Um, if, if you have a look at those sort of campaign websites that we showed at the start, you know, I think they're an excellent example because they've really got their own flavor. You know, they're, they're using the imagery and the, yeah, the colors and things like, like that. Like they'll click a whole bunch of stuff that's thrown in the campaign. And when you think about what is this happening, um, you know, it's like you're saying, it's like the Google Plus campaign. Yeah, well, so in that, you know, in that sort of three minute demo, we essentially build out a, a really sort of simple sort of version of that, right? So if, if you have someone who is able to do that design and the content and so, sort of tell that story, then these are the tools to, to do that. So hopefully, you know, the style guide, the UI kit, it will just be considered the layer underneath and then it's the flavor that comes on top. So the components will be the same, but hopefully the, 
you know, the imagery and the, you know, the, the words and the story will, will, will be the difference. It also comes back a little bit to the sort of continual iteration and development of websites. Um, if you don't need to engage specialists, uh, experts at every stage to make every small change, and we see that an awful lot in GovCMS 7, we see websites that have changes that they've been waiting on for six months because no one on staff can add that fourth box to the home page or can change how big the Twitter widget is. What we're trying to do is put more of that control back in the agency hands so that someone who knows enough and wants to learn more can start to implement that more. So you might start on day one with a website that looks very similar to your other one, but by day 30, day 60, day 180, you can have made those small changes to it yourself that you've given it your own look and feel and vibe. We, the last thing we want to do is force, this is your website, this is what it looks like, drop image A here and text B here and you get another one. That's, that's completely not where we're at. But we want to be able to support that if that's what someone wants to do. Any more or are we calling it a day? Thanks all for coming. Um, if you've got questions in the meantime, either grab me or go and see Murray at the Morph stand. Um, they've got lots of cool sites and demos and things to show. How did you plug in? So it's, it's HDMI only, is it? Yeah, that's right. I might just grab my computer just to make sure I can fit, fit all my gear <laughs> on the left. All right, you're coming up. Hey? Uh, I'm just going to do that now, yeah, just, yeah, to, just to, to prep. It's, good. it's quite a tight, it's quite a tight fit on that. It's good. Yeah. All right, I'll just go and grab okay, it.